السلام علیکم سامعین آج ہم بات کر رہے ہیں پروفیسر لوئی جی فونٹینا سے جو آسٹریلیا کی یونیورسٹی آف سڈنی میں پروفیسر آف میڈیسن اینڈ نیوٹریشن ہیں اور اس کے علاوہ وہ ڈائریکٹر ہیلتھ فار لائف ریسرچ بھی ہیں پروفیسر فونٹینا طول عمر کی سائنس کے اوپر بین الاقوامی شہرت رکھتے ہیں اور اس سلسلے میں انہوں نے متعدد کتابیں اور ریسرچ پیپر بھی تحریر کر رکھے ہیں اور انہیں بین الاقوامی اعزازات اور ایوارڈ سے نوازا جا چکا ہے ان سے ہم بات کریں گے کہ اچھی خوراک کیا ہوتی ہے اور ہم اپنی خوراک میں اور اپنے طرز زندگی میں کون سی ایسی تبدیلیاں لے کے آئیں جس کی وجہ سے ہم ایک صحت مند زندگی گزار سکیں ویسے بھی نئے سال کی آمد آمد ہے اور یہ وہ موقع ہے جب لوگ اپنے آپ سے بہت سے وعدے کرتے ہیں کہ وہ نئے سال میں اپنی زندگی کو کیسے تبدیل کریں گے تو ہم پروفیسر فونٹینا سے یہ بھی پوچھیں گے کہ وہ اس سلسلے میں ہمارے سامعین کو کیا مشورے دیں گے فونٹینا ویری وارم ویلکم اینڈ تھینکس اے لاٹ فار جوائننگ ود اس مائی فرسٹ کوشچن از دیٹ یو آفن ڈسکرائب دی گلوبل ہیلتھ سسٹم ایز ناٹ اے ہیلتھ کیئر سسٹم بٹ اے سک کیئر سسٹم Uh, on which trillions of dollars are wasted every year. So can you tell us that why, uh, what is wrong with this system and how can, uh, can we fix it? Well, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, we made huge improvements with modern medicine and many diseases that were lethal with antibiotics, vaccines and uh, statins, antihypertensive medication, and many other ones, corticosteroids, you know, we, we made major progresses. But now the common disease that, you know, we see in our hospitals now are chronic diseases. They are not infective diseases. And okay. chronic disease, they have multiple causes that are highly related with lifestyles, so with unhealthy lifestyles. And so right now what we do, we train our doctors to diagnose disease after they have occurred. And typically we treat them with drugs and surgery. Instead of, we think, you know, the only way to make our healthcare system sustainable is to invest in prevention, in mechanism-based prevention, because many of the common chronic diseases can be prevented. So the World Health Organization claims that at least 80% of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and strokes are preventable. My data suggests it's more than 80%, probably close to 90%. And the okay. WHO also claims that 40% of cancers, of common cancer, are preventable. My data suggests it is much more than that. Let's come to Pakistan and the traditional uh, diet of Pakistan and the Indian subcontinent. So uh, traditionally, we used to eat a lot of cereals and whole grains and a lot of vegetables. But uh, during the uh, recent years, there's a shift uh, towards the Western type of diet, like a lot of fast food, burgers, chips, and those kinds of things, and a lot of uh, sugary uh, drinks, like sodas and uh, juices and stuff like that, and uh, also a lot of sweet So how is this diet pattern affecting uh, uh, the health of people uh, in Pakistan? It has a huge effect, you know. In fact, you know, the, the, the prevalence of diabetes, of type 2 diabetes in India and Pakistan is huge. It's much higher than uh, in America uh, for several reasons. The main reason is that, you know, for, in, in, in countries where the food was not, it was it was limited and there were people who were doing a lot of exercise when they transition into this type of food you know you were describing this high sugar high fat high uh, refined uh, ultra processed food you know the uh, risk of developing type 2 diabetes is much higher and type 2 diabetes is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease for stroke for Uh, kidney disease, for uh, neuropathy and cancer. So uh, this is a major problem in India because of the epidemics of central obesity. So basically, when you see, you know, your waist circumference, your waistline is increasing, that's not yes. good. This is a, a high risk for diabetes and many chronic diseases, including accelerated aging. Yes, you're right. How can we fix it? What, what can we do to uh, change this? Well, there are several strategies. 
first of all, exercise is a must. You know, before I moved to Sydney, where now I direct, you know, the the, the uh, uh, Charles Perkins Center RPA clinic, I was working at Washington University in St. Louis in U.S. And we did some uh, important studies showing that exercise, for example, if if you if you run, bike, or swim, you know, an hour a day, six days a week, you can lose up to forty percent of your abdominal fat of your visceral fat and you have okay. major improvements in glucose insulin this risk factor for cardiovascular disease so exercise is a must so people they have to understand you know exercise is a powerful mm-hmm. medicine but has to be taken daily okay you start okay. with slow amounts and then you build up up to an hour every every day with a combination of endurance and resistant exercise and that you have to change the diet. You know, basically, you have to go back, you know, to a traditional Indian Pakistani diet, not with white rice, but with brown rice. Okay. And and you have to reduce the fat. You know, you are using too much fat, uh, vegetable oil. You know, when you do your dal or, or lot of your, you fry a lot of food in a lot of oil, and that the oil muscle, is or less. yeah, and that oil, the ghee. The, the vegetable oil is very rich in calorie. as so the combination of uh, refined carbs, sugary beverages, and lots of fatty foods, you know, with the tons of oil is very bad, you know, is increasing the risk of, uh, of uh, abdominal obesity, diabetes, hyperinsulinemia, inflammation, all these factors that are promoting multiple chronic diseases and is shortening lifespan. You talked about exercise and uh, resistance uh, exercise, but most of people don't have access to gyms and like uh, exercise equipment. So uh, like uh, myself included, uh, I do a lot of walking, just walking. That's fine. Walking, jogging. Uh, if you have a bike, biking, for example, I just came back from, from a an hour of biking here in Sydney, so you don't have to go to a gym. I don't go to a gym. I do mm-hmm. basically biking, swimming, uh, running, jogging, walking with you know high 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 intensity walking. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you know you can do some uh, uh, you know with some elastic bands with some small weights. You can use your body to do some resistant exercise at home. You know you don't have to go to a gym. You know you can do a routine of exercise in your house. You know there is uh, an outside. You know there is no okay. need you know to go to an expensive gym. You know to do to do exercise. Like uh, stair climbing, like uh, my climbing is perfect. Stair climbing, when I'm working, for example, every half an hour, every hour, I stand up from the desk and I go, I do, you know, a few flights of stairs. That's good exercise. You know, five minutes here, five minutes there. It counts. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you are walking, you're doing some stairs. Then, you know, maybe you in the morning or in the evening, you go for a bike ride or or for a, a, a walk or jogging. You know, and it adds up and that's quite a bit of exercise. And then you have to understand, you know, that if you are completely sedentary, your metabolism is low. You know, what we have shown that, you know, as you exercise, you increase the number of mitochondria. These mitochondria, these organelles within our cells that are transforming calories, carbs and fat into energy. As you as you become more fit, uh, your, your your mitochondria, they increase in number and they become more, more active. So let's say, you know, when you are sedentary in an hour, you can burn 300 calories. As you get after maybe six months in the same hour, you're burning 600 calories because now you are more fit. So, you know, it takes time to build fitness and to build the capacity for the body to increase metabolic rate and therefore burning calories. In your book, uh, The Path to uh, Longevity, you discuss how to reach 100 with health and stamina of a 40 years old. How is this possible? Because when uh, when we think about 100 year old people, we think of a lot of disease and suffering. So how can 100 year old people have stamina of a 40 year old man? Look, you know, As I said, you know, when I was working at Washington University, we did a lot of studies to understand why we age. And now we have a, 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 
better understanding of which pathways are regulating the accumulation of molecular damage. So we know that 20% of centenarians, they don't develop mm -hmm. any disease before 100 years of age. So we oh. know that in humans, biologically, humans, not animals, not mice or rats, experimental rodents, but humans, they can live a very long life without developing diseases. And as I said, you know, we are dissecting these pathways. And so if you start from a young age to do, to perform the right amount of exercise, the different type of exercise, if you have a healthy diet where you minimize calories and certain proteins and you eat, you know, the right amount of fibers, you are slowing down the accumulation of damage and you are greatly increasing the probability to get to a very old age without developing major chronic diseases. So we have lots of data supporting, you know, this conclusion, as I explained in the book. Okay, so it must be an entire uh, change in your lifestyle, not just a few days. So, so entire yeah. uh, thinking about yeah. diet. But uh, the uh, other problem that I see is that like fine food, fine dining is one of the joys of life. So if you uh, restrict your food and uh, the, your favorite food that you want to eat, but you restrict them, so you are uh, denying yourself one of the pleasures of life. So how to reconcile with this? No, that's not true. I mean, you know, you can eat a very healthy diet, you know, and tasty diet uh, 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 with without... Uh, uh, without you know, um, uh, impairing uh, your quality of life uh, um, because there are foods that are naturally rich in fiber and you, know, you can keep using your spices, you, know, you, know, you, you have you know, your lentils, your chickpeas, but you, you have to use a small amount of fat and sh choosing healthy fat, mon rich in monosaturated fat is, fatty acids, you, know, you can eat, eat your fish, uh, that is cooked in, in a healthy way without frying or using butter or ghee. You can e e consume uh, uh, brown rice instead of white rice. You, know, can, you, can, you can have you know, whole wheat bread instead of white bread. So it's not true that you know, eating healthy means uh, eating uh, uh, untasty uh, food. This is a, a myth. That is, you know, the Mediterranean diet, for example, is an example of a very healthy diet that is very tasty. And also in your cuisine, I think, you know, you can get rid of the unhealthy ingredients and substitute with healthy ingredients without changing the taste of the spices of the, you know, that are making the food interesting. So uh, what's your take on the uh, spices? Because we love our food with uh, a lot of spices like uh, chili and uh, turmeric and other kind of uh, spices. So uh, are they healthy or? They are. They are. You can keep eating those. Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah. No, they are. no problem with spices. Absolutely not. Is the, is the type of food and oils and type of carbs that you are using that are the problem, not the spices. You can keep, you, I love your spices, you know, when I'm in India or even at home, you know, I love, you know, the Indian Pakistani spices. They make the food very, very interesting. So no problem with the spices, they are healthy. As you know that uh, the new year, 2024 is just around the corner. And uh, this is the time of the year that a lot of people make a lot of resolutions to themselves. They promise a lot of things. So uh, what would be your uh, three or four suggestions for those people to uh, uh, have a very healthy uh, 2024? Just two or three suggestions. Yeah, the suggestion, first of all, you know, the first message is that uh, many of the common chronic disease can be prevented by healthy lifestyle okay so don't believe that you know you know you have bad genes bad luck yes but you know we know that you know you can major do major improvements food and exercise and even mindfulness yoga breathing techniques pranayama they are super powerful in regulating different pathways that are promoting okay. health and longevity as i describe in my book by the way, I have a website on YouTube where I do all these videos on this type of, it's free. 
And so yeah. basically, if people, they want to have more knowledge of the new studies, they can also follow my YouTube channel, Luigi Fontana, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. So again, food, exercise, mind, mindfulness, yoga, breathing techniques are powerful medicines for preventing chronic disease. There is not only one, it's not only diet, it's a combination of healthy lifestyle factors that together they are promoting physiological, metabolic, psychological, and spiritual health. It is extremely important. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so you need to start step by step, you know, like when you when you go to school, you know, you start, you know, with one step of math and then you build, you know, you do experiments on yourself and slowly, step by step, you can improve your health. But you you need to start this path, this journey. So you need okay. to start So in the, with the new year, say, OK, I'm going to start this path and I'm going to learn how to make small changes in my food, small changes in my exercise, small changes in my mindfulness uh, spiritual uh, yoga practice and and step by step i can reduce the risk of developing diseases and improving my chance of living a longer healthy and happy life with my friends my family my kids grand grandkids so that's the message to people it can be done it can be done it's just a matter of starting and doing it step by step پروفیسر فونٹینا بہت بہت شکریہ کہ آپ نے انڈیپینڈنٹ اردو کے لیے وقت نکالا اور ہمارے سامعین کے لیے آپ نے بے شقیمت معلومات فراہم کی ایک بار پھر آپ کا بہت بہت شکریہ نو تھینک یو فار ہیونگ می اینڈ ہیپی نیو ایئر ٹو یو اینڈ ٹو ایوری باڈی ان پاکستان